Good evening. This is uh, our first opportunity to uh, talk directly to the board with the prospect of, of uh, interaction other than through public comments representing the uh, rational taxpayers of Hampton. And with me is Jerry Zanoy, who is also a member of Rational Taxpayers of Hampton. And originally I had sent you a letter uh, Rusty requesting the appointment, and I had seven topics on it, and subsequently with uh, communication back and forth with Fred, we were, we were limited to discuss one topic. That's and, right. And I understand those are the ground rules, and we'll respect them. And we do hope that we'll be able to uh, return to visit with you periodically over issues that are near and dear to our interest. I'd like to start by just reiterating what our mission is, uh, and we're not attempting to be gadflies in this community, but we are, uh, our goal is to provide the Hampton taxpayers with facts and recommendations relative to issues that affect the services they received in Hampton and the impact the services have on their taxes and the quality of life. Our organization is diverse, and it's made up of all the political parties, uh, Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. And we're all very passionate about our love for Hampton. And Jerry, if you want to add something to that. Oh, basically, uh, you know, we, we are fact-driven. We analyze very carefully. We're not impulsive. And uh, I'm not implying that you are, but we are deeply analytical, and uh, we go over the facts very carefully. We're strong believers in, in the prudent use of public benefits. I'm a prudent person, financially conservative, frugal, at home. I run my budget this way. I ran industry big budgets with this kind of line of thinking. Not one line item I wouldn't study when the budget, well, I had 18 cost centers. It was quite extensive. In this town, we got like 420 line items. It was a piece of cake for me to look at every one of them. So we look at things very, very closely, and we're value-driven. We want to make sure that value is being obtained for dollars being spent. And we push on one another, and we we're not a big group necessarily, but we're dotted line. We have a lot of dotted lines to various people who have held offices here in town and so okay, on. So, so we're talking about cable TV. Yes, right. yes. And That's our mission, though. <laughs> OK. Um, under our, what for us was the concept of transparency, the uh, cable TV, and we really feel that it's important for the, ta for the, for the uh, taxpayers and for the public to learn as much as what as what happens in this community at your meetings etc and um, so for us it's, it's a systematic approach of being transparent the cable TV fund has been a continuing issue for us and the Warren article which started out in 2016 at 40 percent was modified at the deliberative session to 100 percent with uh, 82,000 uh, coming in in 2015 uh, and then moving to 286, 372, 90 for the first uh, quarter this year and the fund balance reaching a point of now 421 as described earlier but also having hit uh, having hit over 500,000 prior to the expenditures. Uh, you had a discussion and approved uh, spending and uh, of the fund on a proposal that was submitted by the Cable TV Committee and both for the Cable Channel 22 and SAU 90. During the entire time of your discussions, which were 30 to 45 minutes, not once was the amount of money discussed as to how much you all approved. And we think that was uh, either you had the information in your uh, work 
materials that were sent to you prior, but for, from a taxpayer's point of view, trying to find out what was going to be spent, we couldn't find that out. We, we did some research and subsequently were able to find out that 260 was to be spent. We still don't know what SAU's plans are and what they intend on spending out of this cable TV fund. And we think that uh, this has to be made uh, more transparent for the public to understand. And we, we support the fact that there's upgrade, upgrades needed. And, but with the amount of money coming in, uh, this fund's going to continue to accumulate $350,000 plus after you take out their normal operating expenses. <coughs> and in 10 years, it's going to be $3.5 million. Our, our biggest fear is the more money that comes into a fund, the more money is going to be spent on something because it's there to be spent. Rather, and we, we question both on a long-term basis how much money is really needed for the cable TV fund. So while the current needs are being done, and I presume these needs will satisfy for an extended period of time, we wouldn't want to see, now we have all this money, let's have a full-time coordinator, let's have an additional expenditure for this and something else for that. Watching the television, as I did earlier tonight, the uh, video is very mediocre watching it on, cable t uh, on the cable at home. The sound is, you can hear it now, which is better. If you want to see a high def version of what's happening here or a very uh, accurate video, you go to the town's website, which has excellent video, but not everybody's doing that. And we, we generally follow all your meetings, so we'll watch what's happening, and we go back into the video, and we can see it very easily. We can hear it very easily. But I'm not sure how many people watch it, and I'm not, and it certainly is not very inviting when uh, the standard definition is washed out, faded. You can't quite capture everything that you'd like to. We really uh, believe that, uh, that you folks should take a very hard look at what the long-term needs are for the cable TV fund. And uh, we, we support um, uh, a reduction of this fund. Uh, either, and we're going to present a couple ideas on how that should be done. And, um, and I'm going to let Jerry, uh, let Jerry present that. We want to make sure that the needs of the community are met, but if we're being overfunded, that was money that was originally <clears throat> being uh, used to offset taxes, a portion of it, part of it to cover the expenses of, this, of the operation of the cable TV. And somehow or other, it needs to return to that, to that way of being, in our opinion. Go ahead. You well, have a I of mean, it, it, yeah, it boils down to uh, $90,000 a quarter coming in, 360000 a year pouring into this fund almost four million over 10 years so and that's going to be a lot of money sitting there and a lot of temptation to spend it <coughs> a lot of temptation anyway so what really should be done and i don't know if i have the answers but i had a couple of thoughts here's my first thought cut the fee to two percent uh, two percent in other words instead of there used to be one percent they were getting 25 percent of the fund give them 50 percent of the fund Cut it from 4 to 2 percent. Now you're going to say, well, hold on, oh my God, Comcast, it'll take six months, eight months, a year. I've been hearing that since 2009. What I would do, I would put Comcast on, on alert. The fund money would come in. I would direct the um, finance director to take 2 percent, put it into the fund, cable fund, and take 2 percent and put it into the unassigned fund balance for taxpayer future taxpayer relief. That's one way to do it. Second way to do it is to eliminate the fund entirely, fund it by the line item in your operating budgets. Do that with a warrant article as well. That every, I think it's got to be transparent to the public. And what you do is you eliminate the fee to zero. You put your line item in place, to, depending on what the budget calls for, to run the stations here at <coughs> you, and, uh, and indicate to the public that the fee is being eliminated and that the line item expense is being carried in the operating budget. And also tell the public that should this budget be rejected, the unassigned fund balance will fund the station for that particular year what, to whatever its needs are, whatever the percentage is we decide on or the amount of money is. 
I would do it two ways, and I'd explain very carefully to the public what we're doing. But right now, we're taking, you know, a lot of money from the public, $360,000 a year. It's going to be pouring into this fund. It's going to be a lot of money sitting there and a heck of a temptation to use. There's going to be a strong will not to use that money. There'll be, there'll be, like Norm says, a lot of things coming up. We need this, we need that equipment, we need this equipment, we need that director, we need these expenses. The money's there, so it's a temptation. It's a devil there, so to speak. So that's what I would do. I would either cut the fee to 2%, and if Comcast didn't react, I'd put them on notice, then I'd direct the finance director to move the other 2% into the unassigned fund balance for future tax relief, or I would eliminate the fee entirely, put Comcast on notice. In the meantime, if the fund doesn't, it doesn't get eliminated for a month or two. It all goes into the unassigned fund balance. And then we cut a warrant article that we put, we put it into the operating budget, whatever the two stations need, that's SAU 90 and uh, Channel 22. And if the budget fails, we have a fallback plan to give them the funds they needed for that particular year. That's what I would do, one of two things. Those are my thoughts that came into my mind today as we were kind of looking this over. And there's probably other resolutions as well. Those are our thoughts. Any questions from the board? Mary Louise. I don't remember the year that the fund was set up. It was originally set up to garner 25% right. of the franchise fees, right. which appear on your Comcast statement every month. Right. Um, right now, I think it's around $3. Uh, that worked. For, for however many years. And then at the end of 2015, the then board, uh, understanding that the school channel had come on in addition to channel 22, and that they would need some uh, uh, gear to work with, um, the, that board of selectmen unanimously voted to create an article asking the public to delegate 40% of the franchise fees <clears throat> to support both Channel 22 and Channel 13. Unanimous vote. When we got to the deliberative session in February of 2016, mm -hmm. uh, one selectman uh, made an amendment in spite of the unanimous vote by the board in the, the prior November, uh, asking to uh, increase the franchise fee contribution to 100%. And it has stayed that way for the last, what, two or three years. <coughs> I agree that the total of the franchise money, which comes to about $340,000, $60,000 a year, it's, it's a pretty good uh, amount. Uh, right now, it is being used to enhance the problems that we have with the cable transmission, and there will probably be more expenses now with the new addition uh, on the academy mm -hmm. with uh, some of their um, uh, expenses. Uh, I suggested a year or so ago, but it didn't go anywhere, that we restore, by means of warrant article, uh, the 40% that we had proposed in uh, 2016. I think 40% of the cable franchise fee, if of the Comcast franchise fees, uh, could be comfortably uh, given over to operate channel 22 and channel 13. Uh, the fund will be tapped right now for both the town and school with the new enhancements, which looked pretty impressive when, when the gentleman came in and promoted them to the board. But my long range, um, and I'm not hanging my hat on negotiating anything with Comcast, but my long range, my long range comfort zone is for 40% of the annual franchise fees to be donate, uh, donated to the cable uh, functions and then in the future if that's not needed you don't need so much then you can put another warrant article on and reduce the percentage
but I think the 40% was sensible, and I would be happy with that in the future. Jane? Um, one, I agree, I'm glad that we're actually having the work done finally on Channel mm -hmm. 22, yeah. because I think everyone wants to see that happen. But I think we need to maybe get to a point where we decide what needs to get done here and over at the school. Yeah. Figure out a timeline on that. Yeah. And I would be in, definitely in agreement that $360,000 a year going into this fund is way too much money. Yeah. Right. So at 40%, you'd cut it down. If Christy says over the past two or three years, it would go from 90000 a quarter down to thirty six. So, I mean, that's still a good amount going toward it. So times four. I see, yeah. I mean, whatever that is. But I think we need to, like, let a little more time, whether or not the 19 warrant time would be the proper time for that. And I think we have to right. get more of an idea right. from both cable channels what yeah. their See, goals are. I, I think I understood what Jim did. And, you know, what he's saying is, look, that cable fund was set up. That franchise fee was set up for, uh, did I mind interrupting? No, Jim, we're just trying to, we're trying to no, I just said to say, we finish the board's questions. Yeah, well, I, okay, yeah. I was going to respond to Mary Louise's, but but and then, well, whatever. When you're when you guys are through, I can make a comment. Yeah. I'm good. That's okay. all I wanted to say. Jim. Okay. First of all, I got to agree 100, percent and I and it's our fault <laughs> that when we did the uh, contract for the studio, we didn't mention the money. I did a lot of checking today, and that was a total oversight, and that was totally wrong on our part. Some of us looked at it twice, Jim. Yeah, we, we must have missed I totally agree that, that that was wrong, that we didn't do that, no. that we had seen the, the figures and we didn't talk about it at the meeting. Okay. Absolutely, 100%, yeah. totally agree with that. Uh, on the, on the, the, cable, the franchise fee, the definition of the franchise fee is to provide money for PEG, right? Right. Public Education and Government Channel. I see, my, my point on that is I see no reason why a certain portion of the population paying it when 100% of the population is not paying it, it should go to tax relief. I do agree that if there's too much money going into it, we have to renegotiate, we have to cut it down. Justin, yeah. We have to cut it down to what it's necessary to fund the program. And I think on that aspect, I think we in the cable committee have been transparent on that, saying that they're going to get the updates done first. Yeah. They're going to come up with a budget on what it would cost them to run, what they figure a budget to cost to run the program. Yeah. The school is coming up with a budget on what's going to cost them and what they're upgrading. And I think at that time, I agree 100% yeah. that what we're getting now is probably too much money Poor and it yeah. should be cut. But I, I still strongly believe that none of it should go to tax relief unless there's 100% of the people in the town paying it. So I, if, I'm a, if I'm a cable uh, subscriber, I don't see why I should pay an extra fee to reduce your taxes if you're not a cable subs right. subscriber. So that's, I think that's a logical that is. question there. And, that I, is. and I do agree on the part that we did not, and I, I don't think we were trying to hide it from, I, I know we were not trying to hide it from anybody. We didn't mention it that night. That was wrong. Right. Well, accepting that as, a, as, a, uh, as an oversight, and we've got that clarified there. I, I'm just curious that we have people who are subscribers to cable TV who don't own homes, who don't have property here or renters, who still can have a, uh, be paying a portion of that. And uh, we also have no competition. There's no um, yeah. it, the, other than contest. The renter, though, is, is, is sort of paying taxes in his rent because the landlord is paying taxes, so there's right. taxes being paid on the property. So that's kind of an invalid argument to my way of thinking. That a renter is not there subscribing and they're not paying taxes. They're they're paying taxes in their rent, which yeah. goes to the landlord who pays taxes on his property. So that's that's my feeling on that. That's all I have. Rick? <clears throat> well, I don't pay it anymore, so I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I switched to having an antenna. I like it much better. Direct. The, key, the, the uh, pictures much clearer, and I like the channels better too. Direct TV. Um, right, I right. do miss Channel 22, but I do, like Norm said, look at it on cable. And I, I'm so aloof to it. I didn't even realize it is clearer, but you're right. It is clearer. Yeah. Um, you know, 
I don't need it that clear. I see it live right here. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> it really um, but I am in favor of it being readjusted in some way. And I'm in favor of the public deciding how it should be done. And I, I agree with Jim. I think, uh, you know, once we find out what it's going to cost us to run this, and it is no, we, we had much upgrade. Nothing had been done here since the system had been put in. Right. And so we really had to have that. And I, I don't care. Yeah, that, that's an upgrade we're in favor of. And, but once that is done, We've, we've talked to the, both this cable committee and the school and said, you got to give us some insight into what it's going to charge you, what, what, what you think it's going to cost for each year. And that once we have that figure, i got no problem in reducing the amount of the fee that is charged to the Comcast people. I don't, however, think that because we have the fee here that it should go to the reduction of taxes because myself, right. I've never had Comcast. So why is that fair for you that pay Comcast that I get a reduction in my taxes because you pay a, a certain fee? I think that if if we don't need that much, then we should adjust that fee. And now's the time to do that while we are working with the cable, the Comcast, and negotiating their contract. So hopefully we're going to have all this information, and, and we're working on that. So. But that's the way I see it. I don't. I, I. don't see it going back into the general fund. I agree. I think that we should. We should get what we think we're going to need. Right. That's a fee, and then and then move. And forward. the rest of it shouldn't be there. That's, that's right. right. I that's think right. That, that that's the the ideal approach. Is what do you really need to spend to operate? The, that's right. The and we've asked, we've asked for that. Yeah. And it's going to be different. You know, I get the, probably the biggest thing I get phone calls on is <coughs> channel twenty two. People calling about the problems they have with Channel 23. Right. I would say yep. by far that's the most phone calls I get. Yeah. And people watch more people than you ever thought of yeah. watch Channel 22, <laughs> mm -hmm. which I am very surprised at. Uh, but they do, and so they want to have a good, clear, sharp, crisp yes. volume picture, yep. and that's what we're trying to do first. Once we get that, then we can figure out what it's going to cost us and we can adjust that fee. Well, I think we're all in agreement on the, the point of, of, uh, of fairness, of equity for the people that are paying the fee and what's best for the town and what's best for those, those who are paying. We okay. just made an assumption that the majority of the subscribers just would happen to be taxpayers of Hampton. So that was our assumption. No, and uh, I... I I just think that they, you know, there's a lot out there that don't have cable. Yeah. There's a it, lot. It's a peg it. channel. It's a, we should keep it pure, pure to its mission, is to fund, you know, the public education government channel. And I, and I think uh, the school's doing a great job on theirs, mm -hmm. and I think we've done a, a fairly decent job on ours, sure. keeping it done. Um, so. And, 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 and when we hope, and we hope when our folks come in and talk about what they need. SA United comes in and talk about what they need, they were really prudent. Listen to them carefully and be very prudent about public monies because, well, you know, I money. Think we, I think we've been trying to do that. Okay. I, I totally agree. We, we, there was an oversight there that we, we, we had the information and we just didn't okay. telegraph it. But uh, the information was out there. You obviously found it. So. Well, I want to thank you for... Uh, I want to... Uh, Right. Mention, mention that we can do this periodically. There are many topics we can really engage in and be productive with respect to one another. And a, a sewer ordinance upgrade, the status on the sewer plant upgrade, which I don't know where we are on that. Uh, the North Beach wall, we've studied that now. We've had the engineering drawing. We know a lot. We have a lot of questions on that. But that, and but, if those topics come up and you guys feel strongly about a certain topic you want to come in and talk about, by all means, put it in a request and, and we can do that. It would be nice to have a contractor here, too, if, in fact, the questions are related to a contractor. Well, I mean, that's kind of what the Board of Selectmen's job is. Yeah. We're not trying to be a... We're not trying to manage the town. Well, and, and that's what I say. You know, you know, we talk about transparency. I've, I've looked to find out about your organization. And it's hard to find information about it. It's real hard. <laughs> yeah. It's real hard to find out where the minutes are, where the meetings are held. 
you know? And who's in it. And who's in it. They'll have to get on the agenda. Well, well yeah, and maybe we'll have to do that, you know, because, you know, you, you say that Mr. Zanoy is, is speaking as a member, but how do we know who the members are? The only two people who are listed are you and Mr. Pierce in, in Concord. No, I signed that agreement too. Well, but that that was in before 2015. They they revamped it in 2015, so now it's just Mr. Uh, oh, really, uh, no, Norm I, and and uh, I thought it would Mr. Pierce. Those are the only two people that are listed on that. Yeah, I I was upset. So we want to talk about transparency. No, I, I agree, but we're we're not a uh, public. We've had the discussion, and we'll have it again about uh, uh, opening our kimono for more transparency within our organization. I'm for all about it being a public comment. Yeah, just as one final, because you are focusing on revenue, which is an excellent focus, you need to give some consideration to what's been happening with impact fees. We, we, we have, we've, we've talked about impact fees, and we all do right. have a position on Thank that. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.